And then I came down here and it was towards Christmas time. We were still in the cow barn, didn't have the fellowship hall. I came to the cow barn and I went to Sunday school and I went to church and there was Francis White, Wanda Ramey, who even knows all the names? I never left it. Georgia Morrison. I never left this church after that, except to go over to Wesley and the other churches with the quartet and all the other things that we Methodists do. But ever since then, Kavanaugh has been my church. After the first visit that Sunday afternoon to the band came to our home and invited us to come back. They just were too friendly not to accept that invitation. And so we are here since 1969. This church is one of the most loving, accepting congregations that I ever walked into. We came here and we met all these wonderful people and we joined the baseball program. And uh, Pastor Hawkins was pastor at that time. I think when I came Well, Pastor here, Hawkins, that would have been in the early 70s. So it's, uh, and then I met those ladies making pies. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been making meringue ever since. <laughs> These are two of my ladies who have been part of the actual decision making on the renovation. <laughs> no, don't publicize that. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you why the trustees picked the people that they picked. Mm -hmm. They picked Edith Dunn and Kathy Ledford and me. Jan Kelly. And Jan Kelly. And the reason they did that was because they knew if we could ever agree <laughs> on anything, nobody would have the guts to say anything to any of us about it. <laughs> and I really like the blue. I think the blue here and the blue, well, I think it's beautiful. Yep. We were up there and somehow Jean Rainwater, one of the early members of the church, uh, was a politician and he had some risers left over from his booth and we used the choir loft we put them up in the choir loft for a while and then we moved them down to the front of the church and they're still here 40 years later and we've used them we took them out they're two plywood risers that they made and they fit exactly or maybe an inch in the back from the wall and uh, they're in two sections now because it's the only way we could get them up and down the stairs and such. But anyway, Jack Godfrey, no, it was, it was Tom, Jeff, and five women got those things Thank back you. up there <laughs> into the choir loft without messing up the paint or anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we would have done that day if the men hadn't come. I guess they'd still be sitting out here in the sanctuary. Or we'd and have gotten a couple more women. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it was Ginger, Carolyn, Kathy, you were here, weren't you? When we put the risers. And there was there were four or five women. Carolyn, yeah. of course, was. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, we had fun putting them back up there. But that was Jean when rain water. And of course, the rainwaters gave us the property for the whole church and everything in the first place. Well, there's a lumber company next door. They're not there anymore. They're doing <coughs> ceramics. <coughs> but I collected from her refuge pile, a lot of oak, and it stored it in the shop, wondering what it would be used for. 
And after I saw the work being done here and the, the cross was just sitting in the back room, it just looked a little plain to go up on that white wall up there. And so I just felt I was going to make a surround for it. And it just worked out as a labor of love. Well, we're just here finishing putting the cross up, and it's really been a meaningful thing, actually. And Michelle's prayer at the uh, when we got ready to take the cross up to the wall was was very nice. Thank you, Michelle. Sure. The, uh, the, uh, the cross really has been missed. It's, it fits the church. And it's good to have it back up there. Kind of fills up that that space up there where where it belongs. So that's been good. Oh, oh, oh. 